G'day YouTube. Warbles on a lot here. Yesterday I heard on the radio a very, very, very interesting item. So I applied a little bit of technology because yesterday's news is that a priest who used to teach at Chevalier College Bowral has been arrested in Sydney for historical child sex abuse charges committed at Chevalier College Bowral. From 1982 to 86, 88, just slightly after I was what they call a sports house captain in my final year at Chevalier College Barrel. So I have applied a little bit of technology and here's what the Sydney Morning Herald said yesterday. Job hunting? Catholic priest charged over alleged child sex abuse at New South Wales school. A Catholic priest has been charged in Sydney for alleged sex abuse against multiple children at a Southern Highlands boarding school during the 1980s. Police say that Father Anthony Caruana, 77, indecently assaulted five children, aged 12 to 15, when he was a dormitory manager. That should be dormitory master. It's what we called them back in the day, dormitory master. Rugby coach and band teacher at Chevalier College. And we have a more modern photo than any view of Chevalier College that I can recall. The abuse allegedly took place between 1982 and 1988. I left there in the end of 78. I had a cousin who started there in 1974. Four, and he finished in 1977 and I had another cousin who started there in 1978 and he finished in 1981 I think and I had another cousin who started even later you know like my mother's older sister had three sons and she sent all of them to Catholic boarding schools because I'd been sent to a Catholic boarding school but anyway um what do we got here? The abuse allegedly took place between 1982 and 1988. Detectives launched Strike Force CABER, C A B E R, last July to investigate reports of sexual and indecent assaults at the Burradu boarding school during the 1980s. Their inquiries led them to arrest Father Caruana at a home in Kensington in Sydney's eastern suburbs on Friday. Now, my recollection is that the missionaries of the Sacred Heart used to maintain what they called a seminary or a semen ary, where young men studying for the priesthood used to live at Kensington in Sydney. So maybe that's become a refuge for time expired geriatric priests. Perhaps, question mark. Uh, police charged the men with six sexual assaults and acts of indecency on a child younger than 16 and two offences of gross indecency on a boy. He was granted strict conditional bail and will face Waverley Local Court on May 20 of the 2nd. Okay, now as I said, in 1978 I was actually sports house captain for Giles, which was one of the four sporting houses at Chevalier College Barrel. So this is kind of really interesting to me. I automatically kind of sent a text message to my cousin, the one who was in first form when I was in sixth form. He had an older brother, and my older cousin, he started at Chevalier College, pretty sure in 1974, and he started there because 
my mother sent me to a Catholic boarding school. Therefore, her older sister, because of sibling rivalry, sent her eldest son to a Catholic boarding school. That's how come my older cousin was at Chevalier. And then when De La Salle College Armadale went broke, and I'd been sent to De La Salle College Armadale because my father and his father had sent my father's kid brother to De La Salle College Armadale in about 1941 when my father's mother died and Uncle Spencer was about 13, 12, something like that. Um, so yeah, my father knew about sending teenagers to boarding school if you were kind of too busy to look after them. So I got sent to boarding school. Therefore, my mother had a sister who wanted to be competitive. So she sent her son to boarding school. And when De La Salle College Armadale went broke, I spent six months at Glen Innes High School and then an opening appeared at Chevalier College Barrel and behold, I went to Chevalier. And where is it De La Salle College Armadale? I was the kid who was kind of the only child of the town's odd couple who didn't know how to fight. Therefore, I finished up with a, a bit of a loud mouth. And then I was on the bottom of the heap and I was bullied for the best part of two years. And for me, it was a rescue when De La Salle Armadale went broke. I didn't ever get sexually assaulted or sexually you know, harassed there, but I got beaten and bullied pretty badly. And I got strapped by the brothers. But then I went back to Glen Innes High and back there, none of the other kids in my local hometown had ever been to boarding school. They'd always been threatened with getting sent to boarding school. I had been to boarding school and survived. I had returned. They treated me like I was really dangerous. And one of them once stood up to me and I punched him in the belly and he fell to the floor, blew in the face, couldn't breathe for about a minute and a half because I got him in the solar plexus. And after that, man, yeah, they kept about three foot distance around me in case I got cranky with them. It was better than the Fonz, you know, on the happy days. That was me. And then I got shipped off to a boarding school where I had an older cousin, a year and a half older than me. And I had a dream run. And then when I was in sixth form, you know, the oldest year, that's when my little cousin come in in first form. And, you know, I sort of looked after him and off I went. And, and I had my life and he was there for four years. And just before he left, his little brother come in there. And, uh, yeah, so I, I can call on three cousins plus my own experience at Chevalier College Barrel. And none of us ever got sexually assaulted. But on the other hand, we were Presbyterians at a Catholic boarding school. In talking it over with my cousin, the millionaire real estate agent from the mid-north coast of New South Wales, we figure the reason that none of the poofters or the pedophiles ever tried it on with us is because they knew we were not loyal to the hierarchy running to Rome and the God theory up above. If they broke the law with us, we would have spoken up. That's our best guess as to why we four, because, you know, like, I'm alive, the real estate agent's alive, his little brother doesn't talk to him, and their big brother, he died of motorcycling back in 1984. But the thing is, this uh, Caruana, the missionaries of the Sacred Heart father who was arrested at Kensington for child sexual assault at Chevalier College Barrel between 1982 and 1988, yeah, my cousin remembers him and says that everybody in his group hated him. And when I contacted him via SMS and told him that this was on, he went and had a bit of a look among his old Chevalier College yearbooks. And he was able to actually come up with photographs, not only of Caruana, the bloke who's currently on bail facing charges, but he was also able to come up with a photograph of the only Chevalier College staff member who's ever been convicted and sentenced for child sexual assault, but it didn't happen at Chevalier. What happened was uh, the fellow was at Chevalier, my cousin younger than the immediate one younger than me, he remembers him, but then the fellow left, went somewhere else, and then he was arrested and charged and convicted and sentenced. So let's have a bit of a bo peep at the photographs here. Yeah is a picture of Brian Napper, and I would draw your attention 
to the eyeballs on this bloke and I point out that they look like fried eggs. This is a condition the Japanese term sanpaku. When you sanpaku, it means that you're out of touch with yourself, you're out of touch with the life force spirit of the universe, and well, JFK was sanpaku just before he died. So was Marilyn Monroe. A lot of people are sanpaku just before their life turns to shit. Brian Napper, who was a lay teacher, bracket, had a Ford Cobra, who was put in jail for similar things at another private school after he left Chev. Brian Napper got 13 years, was charged after he left Chev and worked at another private school. The charges, as I recall, reading related to his time at the new school and not to Chev. And then, Father Anthony, Anthony Caruana. He's the bloke they've got charged now, shown here, with his football team, and here, with the band. And, uh, that kid there, that's my cousin Gregory Shaw, in the band under Father Caruana, the Chevalier College priest who is currently facing charges for child sexual assault. So I consider this not only a near miss, I consider this a very near miss. There but for the grace of God theory goeth us. For whatever it's worth, my recollections of Chevalier College back in the 70s, yeah, there were some of the staff who we considered to be poofers. And to get your political correctness, I'm using the vernacular of the time. They were poofers. One time, one of the known staff poofers accosted me down near the rifle range and he thought he'd got me for being out of bounds. However, at the time, I was captain of the school rifle team. And therefore, I had an excuse for being at the rifle range, where in actual fact, I'd stubbed out my cigarette and moved 15 paces away from it as soon as I saw him coming. So he couldn't get me for being out of bounds, and he instead engaged me in a spirited discussion about Presbyterianism, Catholicism, Liberal Party values, Labor Party values, and after a while he turned around and scuttled away. He didn't try to molest me, even though I knew he was a poofter. There was another brother who ran the infirmary, and there were lots of stories about him giving people a tepid sponge or a tepid bath for a fever and filling them up and molesting them and groping them. But none of that ever happened to me or my cousins, because we were Presbyterians, you see. But for whatever it's worth, Bosco House Chevalier in black and white, Kodak Box Brownie. My bedside locker at Chevalier College, and I was really wrapped because it was twice the size of the one I had at Bill Arcel College Armadale. Back then, I was an aeroplane head, and I had disciples. When I got a colour camera, I photographed my lawn locker. Belay that, my food locker. At De La Salle, we had a thing this big as our sports locker. It's what we kept all of our casual clothes in to get dressed in after a shower at the end of the day. That's a self-portrait at uh, Chevalier College Barrel. Lunch at Chevalier, where the fees were three times higher than De La Salle College Armadale. And I thought the food was three times better, and that's at Chevalier College, and it's banana on a bun. Sixth form or year 12, 1978. Some of my friends who lived in Karen's Wing, whereas I lived at Bosco House. These photos are on a rainy day. The teenage warbles didn't buy a skateboard. The teenage warbles laminated a skateboard from fiberglass and made his bloody own. While his mate, Eddie Bodka, fell off the one his father bought. Saturday morning at Bosco House, we used to have to clean up. Bosco House Recreation Room. Note we had Asians, even back in the 70s. Marco Fanti, bullying Richard Cormack. Richard's uh, couple of years at Trevally were absolute hell. Marco Fanti left at the end of 1976. He finished fourth form. 
He died of a heroin overdose in King's Cross in 1977. Mark Heffernan, very gifted thief. Eddie Bodka, a skateboard pilot who fell off. Anthony Yard, lives at the Blue Mountains. Murray Swanson, grew up with his sisters. His aunties and his mother used to ask us to teach him how to walk like a man. Father Brian Carroll, died of cancer. Anthony Bolt. Yeah, you've got a lot of good in you, fellow, but you do such silly, silly things. Ciao.